As an inventor, there have been times where I've developed an idea and the first company to which I presented loved it and we closed a deal. Those are the days that everyone wants to be an inventor. However, most ideas don't go that smoothly from conception to market. Oftentimes, you'll develop an idea and no one will care. And if they do care, they'll want to see a prototype. And if you have a prototype, they'll want to see a patent. And if you have a patent, they'll want to see sales. So, often it is an arduous journey when it comes from getting ideas out of your head and into the market. And oftentimes, when I'm telling people about my work, their general response is, how can you do that? I would never be able to withstand that amount of rejection. And to some extent, this could be the end of the talk. If you don't believe, no one else will. Henry Ford once said there are two kinds of men, one who believes he can and the other who believes he can't. As it turns out, they're both right. But for me, I don't have trouble believing. I'm the one working on the project every day. Every day, I can see progress. Every day, I can see the measurable result. The burning question for others has become, how do I persist? What I have learned can be utilized by anyone who is committed to taking daily action towards achieving their goals. My last display of persistence ended up on national television. About eight months ago, I filmed a TV show called Shark Tank. I presented my, at that time, just patented five-minute furniture. I walked into the Shark Tank and I said, my name is Jared Joyce. I'm an inventor and entrepreneur, and today, in exchange for $250,000, I'm offering you 25% equity in my patented five-minute furniture. My presentation was flawless, the energy was high, and for the first five minutes, those sharks were eating out of the palm of my hand. Then they asked me three questions. Those three questions were, what are your sales? How much money have you invested? And how long have you been working on this project? And at that time, my answer to those three questions had to be, zero sales, 250,000 invested, and I had been working on the project for a total of seven years while waiting for the patents to issue. All of the sudden, I just didn't seem like the same hot prospect I did 30 seconds early, earlier. In the end, the Sharks did not offer me 250,000 for 25% of my company. They offered me 250,000 for 100% of my company. I said no, I turned around, and I walked out. A few months later, I closed a better deal with a company called Edison Nation. But it's what happened last month when my episode aired that I find to be most interesting. You see, there were those who were thrilled that I turned down the shark's offer. And then there were those who were devastated. Their view is that I had spent seven years, 250000 and since I didn't close a deal on a shark tank, I better just quit now. Pack it up. Time to stop fooling myself. If I hadn't made it yet, I wasn't going to make it ever. When people say you haven't made it yet, so you better quit now, what they're doing is what I call getting stuck in the gap. This is a simple idea where if you say you want to go from point A to point B and you only get to here, you say, oh, I've come all this way and I'm still not there. I'm stuck in the gap, and I might as well quit. Instead, you should say, hey, we've come all this way, and soon I'll close the gap. Hooray! I'll tell you a gap story. Thomas Edison, in 1879, was asked if he felt like a failure and if he thought he should give up on trying to perfect the commercially viable light bulb. Perplexed, Edison replied, young man, why would I feel like a failure? And why would I ever give up? I now know definitively over 9,000 ways that an electric light bulb will not work. Success is almost in my grasp. And shortly after that, at over 10,000 attempts, Edison perfected the light bulb. 
Thomas Edison closed the gap. When you think about it, any level of mastery that you have in your life, chances are you didn't get it by performing one Herculean effort last Tuesday. Chances are your success is the result of ordinary things consistently done, which leads to extraordinary results. Successful people not only put in the time, they've learned to embrace failure. They've dropped the negative connotations associated with short-term failure and traded up to view failure as a form of learning and a necessary component to long-term success. Now, back on Shark Tank, everyone, myself included, wants to be the guy that can say, not only have we done A, B, and C, last year we did a million in sales. What people often forget, though, is that before you have a shot at doing a million in sales, what you have to do first is start. And if this is a million in sales, where do you start? You start here. And getting there takes time. With the example of five-minute furniture, first I had to come up with the idea, then develop the idea, then raise investor funding, then prototype, then file for patents, then negotiate with the patent office, then have the patents issue. And while others are saying, quit now, I am telling you, if you've got issued patents and you want to get to a million in sales, having the opportunity to present your product on national television and then close the deal with Edison Nation to commercialize the product, you just cut this gap in half. James Dyson invented what is now the best-selling vacuum cleaner in the world. His products have gone on to do over 10 billion in sales worldwide. What you might not know is that in 1974, he invented the ball barrow. And it was in 1978 that he started work on his first vacuum. Over 5,000 prototypes later in 1986, his vacuum was for sale. But it wasn't until 2005, 19 years later, that he thought to apply the benefits of the ball barrow design to what is now the iconic Dyson vacuum we all know today. James Dyson closed the gap. Success is not the absence of problems. You will always have problems. Success is having a higher quality set of problems from one year to the next. (laughs) Last year, I had been working on five-minute furniture for seven years, had invested $250,000, and had no patents or profits to show for the effort. Today, one year later, I now have issued patents, have presented the invention on national television, have partnered with Edison Nation to commercialize the invention. What a difference a year makes, huh? I started this journey eight years ago. I am committed to finish, and every day I take action. I will close the gap. Remember, sometimes your best competitive advantage is your ability to outlast everyone else. Every day is an opportunity to take action. And the great thing about taking action is that when you do, only one of two things can happen. Either you will succeed, or you will fail. And if you succeed, good, do more of that. And if you fail, good, you will learn something from that failure. Either way, you will have made progress. All actions are cumulative. By taking action, you create positive forward momentum towards achieving your goals. Whatever you want to accomplish, start your journey, commit to finish, take action every day, and you will close the gap. Thank you.